In developed countries, children routinely get immunizations with vaccines that protect them from more than a dozen diseases, like measles, polio, and tetanus. Diseases that were once major killers of children and are now at their lowest levels in history, thanks to the vaccines of modern medicine. But in much of the world, millions of children are not immunized. Vaccines are often unavailable, health services are poorly provided, and families are uninformed about the need for immunization. Among these countries, some of them are now making dramatic progress with immunizing their children, investing what is needed as a political priority. After successfully eliminating polio in its population, India has taken a leading role in this progress. I never thought that I would see the end of poliomyelitis in my lifetime. The fact that it has been eliminated in India is a huge achievement. Uh, after having won the war against polio, we have to make the routine immunization our main key focus. I have checked about five or six children. Only one child was immunized. The community should immunize their children against seven killer diseases. This mission is using a lot of the tools and techniques of polio. Routine immunization protect our life. This is Muradabad city, famous for the brass industry. My name is Abdul Sami Khan, and I am working here for UNICEF Social Mobilization Network. It's a very popular city, one million people living in Muradabad city. The traffic situation is very, very serious because the auto rickshaw, bikes, the scooters, everybody is in hurry. The children from the schools, they are also in the same speed. The situation is very, very pathetic. In India, it is the population explosion, 1.2 billion. This is the life of the common man in Muradabad. This is a main railway line of Muradabad, and people living here coming from different places, and nomadic population are also living here at a track side. Their daily income is about 100 to 150 rupees per day, and their children, they are not going to school. All children are rag picking. They are rag pickers. So these people who are sorting the garbage, yes. they are they are from uh, different places. Than yes, Bihar, right? yes, so from Bengal and Bihar. From West Bengal and Bihar. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My name is Nicole Deutsch. I'm the chief of the polio program for UNICEF India. Look, these people, you know, husband and wife, sorting this. But some of them also end up as what we call rag pickers, or those that literally sort the garbage. And they live in the garbage. The garbage is brought to their communities, and then they sort it, and it gets sold for some money. He's showing that he got injury six months earlier uh, with a uh, rickshaw. He is not recovering because he is living in a very pathetic condition, a very dirty environment. India is progressing, but technology is very high, but this section is totally discriminated because they are not getting the basic 
services like immunization or they are not going to school. This is polio case. His left leg is totally affected by polio. He is 20 year old. 20 year old belong to the, this nomadic community. 10 years back, he was infected with polio. So polio is a virus that's transmitted through human feces, generally through water, and so therefore it's quickly transmitted through densely populated areas with poor sanitation. It affects their muscles, so they get paralyzed within hours. And in from 5 to 10% of the cases, the people will die. Most people of my generation in the U.S. have no memory of polio. None of our friends had it. In India, everybody knows somebody who's been affected by it, every community pretty much. Especially in these certain areas with more underprivileged people, there's many, many people affected by polio and still children as young as the age of five. For every person that's affected, there's actually 200 people around carrying it. And it's pretty predominant mostly for children under the age of five, which is why that's our target group. This is a child, Shani Ali. He's affected by polio. He's a polio survivor. His both legs are totally affected. And he, even he is not able to play with the, his uh, peer groups. We visited this boy who was stricken with polio. And this boy was already born into terrible circumstances, being poor, living in such conditions. And being paralyzed by polio eliminated any chance of a future. Do you go to school? Do you go to school? Do you go to school? No. The parents seem to have given up any idea of giving him any education at all. He couldn't get to the nearby school, which was quite close, and then the technical schools were too far, and at that point he wouldn't be able to read and write anyhow. He's unable to play outdoor games like cricket. It was sad to see him watching the other children play, knowing that he can't join in at all. So he's playing with these cards on, in his own house. These are children that are confined to their beds or crawling or walking with some walking aid or crutch. It just takes the whole fun out of a child. I'm Matthew Verghese, head of orthopedic surgery at St. Stephen's Hospital, Delhi. When I joined this hospital in 1990, every year in the city of Delhi alone, there were 3,000 new patients. It was the number one cause of musculoskeletal disability in India, crippling hundreds of thousands of children across the country, in every village. She's Arifa, and uh, when she came, a little bundle that had to be carried by her mother. These are all children that have now grown up to be young adults, paralyzed in their childhood, around one, two. That's the most common year when they get paralyzed. When the child begins to get out of the house and starts eating or drinking water that is contaminated. We got her rehabilitated, we got her sitting, we got her into a wheelchair. Now she's married and she's now she's pregnant. There's nothing under the sun that these muscles that are paralyzed can be made to work again. Nothing under the sun. What do I do? It's almost straight now. I can reconstruct some of these paralyzed muscles and deformed joints to be functional and stable enough to get them to walk on their two feet and give them the dignity of walking on their two feet. That's all. Rehabilitating them back to a, a near normal life. So remember, the disease is preventable. Poliomyelitis, or infantile paralysis, was once a dreaded childhood disease worldwide, crippling and often killing its victims. Parents lived in fear of polio's sudden attack, 
and the tragic aftermath. But starting in the 1950s, the development of effective vaccines brought polio under control in developed countries, where it's no longer considered a public health problem. But polio has persisted in some countries in Africa and Asia. A global initiative to eradicate the disease has immunized more than two and a half billion children. In less than 30 years, polio cases globally have decreased by 99% with only a few hundred cases reported in 2015. After its own massive vaccination campaign, India has not had a new case of polio since 2011 and has now been certified as polio free. This was a monumental achievement for India. In uh, 2009, India accounted for half of the world's polio cases, and it was really considered to be the last country that would probably eradicate it due to the size of the country. And then just the millions of people living in these very close, densely populated areas with poor hygiene. Basically a hotbed, a catalyst for polio. The polio eradication program is still a major, major initiative. There are two national immunization campaigns per year. Each campaign reaches 170 million children across the country. The role of children is very important because the children is shouting slogans. Also take the message from this rally to their homes and mobilize their parents also. Actually, the polio campaign starts off with festivities. And then the first day of the campaign is booth day. It's a major celebration. Everybody comes out to the booth. The children go with their schools and their classes. They chant slogans. In Uttar Pradesh, there's over 90% coverage at the booth alone on the very first day of the National Immunization Days. This is then followed the next day it's by house-to-house -house activities. The vaccinators and team goes door-to-door -to, -door to every household in a specific order. <laughs> the afternoon of the day is follow-up activities, which means any house that had children that are known to be there but weren't home for whatever reason, whether they were out or they weren't vaccinated because they were sick or the family doesn't want the vaccine for various reasons. We couldn't vaccinate all children because of their parents' reluctance. My name is Dr. Sanjeev Yadav. I am Chief Medical Officer of Maradabad District. Social mobilization concept really brought up that this vaccine is very, very important for their children. So social mobilization really brought children to the vaccine. Partnerships are very, very important. We have UNICEF. We have Rotary International here. Are there are certain things which government machinery can do very nicely. But when it comes to community awakening, when it comes to doing some things which can be done uh, through out-of-the-box uh, type of activities, then the role of partners is very, very important. One, two, three, four, you three. This campaign is not run by UNICEF, nor by any of the partners such as Rotary or WHO. It really is a national program and a national partnership towards it, but it's really government-led and people-led. Whole communities come out. They're anticipating it. The polio campaign is now part of life in India. Before every polio round, we go to mosque and contact with Imam. Assalamu alaikum. 
कैसे हैं आप जी अलहमदिल्ला का शुक्र एहसान है परवरदार एंड देन आस्क हिम टू मेक अनाउंसमेंट दैट टुमारो विल बी अ पोलियो बूथ डे एंड ब्रिंग देयर चिल्ड्रन जीरो टू फाइव ईयर एंड इम्यूनाइज देम विद पोलियो ड्रॉप्स सो दिस इज़ अ बेसिक बेसिकली वी डू पोलियो बूथ पर लाएँ और अपने बच्चों को पोलियो की खुराक जरूर पिल Mobilization is convincing people to immunize their children. We use influencers such as imams, health workers, teachers, and designated community mobilizers. It helps build trust and ultimately increase vaccination. Rizwan is saying that he is a polio victim and he is facing the problem every day. यहाँ तक कि सफर करने में भी ज़्यादा दिक्कत होती है तो he is saying that he is cannot live a common man's life because he is not able to move on foot and he has faced a lot of difficulty in travelling. Earlier he was thinking that God made him victim, but now later on he has realized that it's okay. Mothers' meetings like this are a key part of the polio program. Having survivors present helps really hit home the impact of these diseases. When he was one and a half year old, he was he became the victim of polio. There was no polio campaign in India. Now he's educating others to help prevent the disease. He doesn't want to see any child like him. He is also asking these women to come forward and immunize their children against seven killer diseases. India is really uh, taking that energy, that mobilization, that ownership from the polio experience and really using it for other initiatives. It shows what can be done and then the big question is what will India do next? The lessons and the legacy and tools are all being used for routine immunization. Complete immunization, our right. And, and when we say routine immunization, we're talking about things we take for granted in the U.S. Whooping cough, tetanus, measles. Here, people just don't have access to those vaccines. Mummy, Papa, bhoolna jana. The mummy, Papa, don't forget. Must immunize children. Great. अपने बच्चों को दो बूंद हर बार पांच साल तक. We are now using the lessons such as how we mobilize communities, raise awareness, and increase the demand. All the polio drops can be delivered by anybody. It doesn't require a medical professional with injections. In routine immunization, you have to follow a specific schedule and do follow-up, otherwise the full immunity is not there. So getting the parents to come back for the second or third time is one of the biggest challenges that we're trying to address in this. India's immunization program is one of the largest public health initiatives in the whole world. With 27 million children born every year, vaccinating those is a major feat. The goal of this program is to get 90% of the children fully immunized by the year 2020. I have a daughter and she's just 11 months now, so she just finished her last DPT-3 and um, the measles, right. I have also immunized my both child. Fully, they are fully immunized. Every child should be immunized. That's why I have very much empathy and sympathy with these people because they are also human beings.